What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show. Where we discuss everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., and everything you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, daily news, the fourth stimulus package update, stimulus check update. We cover it all here on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will keep you up to date. Subscribing is completely free. And as always, thanks for hitting the like button for us down below. President Biden gave his first State of the Union speech last night. And he also talked about his stimulus package, the Build Back Better package, which is going to be probably renamed here. And a lot of interesting things here in this package, as well as what he said about uh, Russian President Putin and Ukraine. He says to about um, Putin that we're coming for you. Uh, check out what he has to say here. Six days ago, Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. And President Zelensky, to, their, to every Ukrainian, their fearlessness, their courage, their determination literally inspires the world. Groups of citizens blocking tanks with their bodies, everyone from students to retirees to teachers, turned soldiers defending their homeland. And in this struggle, President Zelensky said in his speech to the European Parliament, Light will win over darkness. The Ukrainian ambassador to the United States is here tonight, sitting with the First Lady. Let each of us, if you're able to stand, stand and send an unmistakable signal to the world of Ukraine. Thank you. We, the United States of America, stand with the Ukrainian people. Throughout our history, we've learned this lesson. When dictators do not pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos. They keep moving. And the cost, the threats to the America and America to the world keeps rising. That's why the NATO alliance was created, to secure peace and stability in Europe after World War II. The United States is a member, along with 29 other nations. It matters. American diplomacy matters. American resolve matters. Putin's latest attack on Ukraine was premeditated and totally unprovoked. He rejected repeated, repeated efforts at diplomacy. He thought the West and NATO wouldn't respond. He thought he could divide us at home in this chamber and this nation. He thought he could divide us in Europe as well. But Putin was wrong. We are ready. We are united, and that's what we did. We stayed united. We prepared extensively and carefully. We spent months building coalitions of other freedom loving nations in Europe and the Americas, to, from America to the Asian and African continents, to confront Putin. Like many of you, I spent countless hours unifying our European allies. We shared with the world in advance what we knew Putin was planning and precisely how we would try to falsify and justify his aggression. We countered Russia's lies with the truth. And now, now that he's acted, the three wo free world is holding him accountable, along with 27 members of the European Union, including France, Germany, Italy, as well as countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and many others, even Switzerland, are inflicting pain on Russia and supporting the people of Ukraine. Putin is now isolated from the world more than he has ever been. Together, 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 
Together, along with our allies, we are right now enforcing powerful economic sanctions. We're cutting off Russia's largest banks in the international financial system, preventing Russia's central bank from defending the Russian ruble, ruble, making Putin's $630 billion war fund worthless. We're choking Russia's access. We're choking Russia's access to technology that will sap its economic strength and weaken its military for years to come. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. The United States. Yeah, and honestly, um, if you've been watching the media and um, Ukraine, um, a lot of people are starting to wonder if Russia's going to win this. Uh, it is interesting. I mean, there's 30 NATO countries imposing sanctions against Russia. Even China has now publicly come out and said that they're not allies with Russia anymore. Um, the Russian stock market was was closed um, this week starts, and the Russian stock market has fallen almost 50%. Their dollar has fallen about 50%. The ruble, um, everything around Russia is collapsing. And you, they're not really winning the war. Um, so the question is, is that how long are they going to be able to uh, sustain this? As more and more countries, the EU, the US, you, you heard him list some of the countries there, even Switzerland, even Switzerland, you know, neutral as a Switzerland, is um, freezing Russian assets. You think about everybody, or I mean, not everybody, but I mean, you think about if you're going to hide money, you hide money in Switzerland. Switzerland is freezing all the Russian or Russian money in Switzerland. You can see here, Switzerland has decided to endorse EU sanctions against Russia in full. Uh, their president has announced today, assets of targeted individuals will be frozen immediately. They told reporters, including any that transpire and belong to President Vladimir Putin and their prime minister, including hundreds of individuals won't have access to their money in Switzerland anymore. Wow. Quote, that is indeed important because Switzerland is a major financial center. That's quite a substantial move from them, part because traditionally they have observed a policy of neutrality. The Swiss Federal Council decided to do so because playing into the hands of an aggressor is not neutral. Also, more and more companies are pulling out of Russia. First, we have major oil companies like BP and Shell. And now Apple is pulling out of Russia for the time being. You can see here Apple halts product sales in all of Russia. Apple has stopped selling its products on the Apple store in Russia. Currently, Apple has just completely stopped selling in all of Russia and Apple Pay and Google Pay uh, is halting in Russia and for Russia customers. And um, this is this is uh, leaving a lot of people that they can't even pay to get on the subway now um, in Russia. So more and more becoming more and more difficult for the Russian economy, not only because Russia's losing billions and billions of dollars from Putin and uh, Russian oligarchs. But uh, the whole Russian economy is being crippled and in some cases collapsing um, literally by the day, by the day. And you got to kind of wonder, even if Putin takes over Ukraine, will he even be able to hold it? There's 45 million people in Ukraine. And will it even be a victory by the time all is said and done? Also, Biden spent a uh, pretty decent amount of time speaking about the Build Back Better package and uh, rebranding it and talking about making it into Made in America. When we use taxpayers' dollars to rebuild America, we're going to do it by buying American. <laughs> Buy American products. Support American jobs. 
the federal government spends about $600 billion a year to keep this country safe and secure. There's been a law on the books for almost a century to make sure taxpayers' dollars support American jobs and businesses. Every administration, Democrat and Republican, says they'll do it, but we're actually, we're actually doing it. We'll buy America to make sure every, everything from the deck of an aircraft carrier to the steel on highway guardrails is made in America from beginning to end, all of it, all of it. But, folks, to compete for the jobs of the future, we also need a loving playing field with China and other competitors. That's why it's so important to pass the Bipartisan Innovation Act sitting in Congress that will make record investments in emerging technologies and American manufacturing. We used to invest almost 2 percent of our GDP in research and development. We don't now. Can't. China is. Let me give you one example why it's so important to pass. If you travel 20 miles east of Columbus, Ohio, you'll find 1,000 empty acres of land. It won't look like much, but if you stop and look closely, you'll see a field of dreams, the ground in which America's future will be built. That's where Intel, the American company that helped build Silicon Valley, is going to build a $20 billion semiconductor megasite, up to eight state-of-the-art factories in one place, 10,000 new jobs. And in those factories, the average job about $135, $135,000 a year. Some of the most sophisticated manufacturing in the world to make com computer chips the size of a fingertip, the power of the world in everyday lives, from smartphones, technology, that is, the Internet, technology is yet to be invented. But that's just the beginning. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger who is here tonight. I don't know where Pat is. Pat, there you go. Pat, stand up. Time to see the, the what used to be called the Rust Belt become the, 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 the home of, of, of a significant resurgence of manufacturing. And with all the bright spots in our economy, record job growth, higher wages, too many families are struggling to keep up with their bills. Inflation is robbing them of gains they thought otherwise they would be able to feel. I get it. That's why my top priority is getting prices under control. Look, our economy roared back faster than almost anyone predicted. But the pandemic meant that businesses had a hard time hiring enough people because of the pandemic to keep up production in their factories. So you didn't have people making those beams that went into buildings because they were out. The factory was closed. The panic also disrupted the global supply chain. Factories close. When that happens, it takes longer to make goods and get them to the warehouses, to the stores, and go, prices go up. Look at cars last year. One-third of all the inflation was because of automobile sales. There weren't enough semiconductors to make all the cars that people wanted to buy. And guess what? Prices of automobiles went way up, especially used vehicles as well. And so we have a choice. One way to fight inflation is to drive down wages and make Americans poorer. I think I have a better idea to fight inflation. Lower your costs, not your wages. And folks, that means make more cars and semiconductors in America, more infrastructure and innovation in America more goods moving faster and cheaper in America, more jobs where you can earn a good living in America. Instead of relying on foreign supply chains, let's make it in America. So yeah, let me know your initial thoughts. We'll be talking more about, um, as we learn details about what uh, to expect in this upcoming um, new rebranded uh, Build Back Better stimulus package as we learn more details here um, in upcoming uh, videos here on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll be, let me know your in initial thoughts about Made in America. I do believe 
you know, I think most Americans believe we do need to make more things here in America, especially with what's going on here in the world, uh, with China not really being our ally, not really being Russia's ally, um, kind of being a, a friend of me. Um, it, it, you know, they make things cheaper, but then you got to ship them over here with the cost of oil and everything going up, up, up. You know, uh, you got to kind of take that into consideration, you know, so U.S. has to make more things here uh, in the U.S., then you don't have to ship them, you know. Now, things are, you know, typically made uh, more expensive here in the U.S., but if we can get the cost of things down here in the U.S., make them here, and then you don't have to ship them across the world, um, as you kind of uh, improve on things, you can probably make things and lower the cost of them as well um, as you improve on those. It'll be also, you know, Biden didn't go into specifics of what we're going to see here in this news package. We'll be talking about that this week as we learn more details and what we see. We've also had some interesting uh, bipartisanship here recently, especially from uh, some Republicans like Mitt Romney and the child tax credits. Uh, remember, Mitt Romney's not even up for re-election this year. He's not up for re-election until 2024. So we are seeing some Republicans kind of step forward, uh, especially with the child tax credits. Uh, remember that his plan is for more money. Uh, it's actually $4,200 per year um, for children under the age of six, $350 per month instead of $300 per month. So it's actually... Um, more money. And um, there is actually several different Republicans that could potentially help vote for that. So, and um, we'll be talking about a lot of different things here as we learn more details. So definitely make sure to tune in here. Remember, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. It just makes it so you are more likely to see our videos and not miss out on them. After clicking the subscribe button, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get reminders when we go live with new videos. You can click here to watch my newest video next and you can click here to see my new video on social security raises um, coming out here hopefully this year as well so click on one of those videos next thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video